Hello, my name is Case, and welcome to a brand new Right Brain tutorial. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing by clicking uh, the button right here. If you're watching this on my older YouTube channel, Midphase, please consider checking out my brand new channel, Right Brain Tutorials, right here on YouTube, and I'll post a link uh, that you can click uh, down here. So, uh, without further ado, what I wanted to talk about today is the fact that as a filmmaker, I do a lot of my shooting on cameras like these, and actually I have like a brand new uh, Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera coming up uh, hopefully sometime this month. So, how do I translate what this camera is seeing into what my Houdini camera is going to be seeing? And that's what I wanted to talk about, so uh, let's find out how. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. I uh, just created a simple cube and I'm gonna add a camera by clicking on this button and I'm gonna uh, make sure that we're viewing uh, our viewport through the camera. And uh, Cinema 4D makes it relatively simple to match the field of view of the Cinema 4D camera to what a real world counterpart would show. So uh, you basically have these two parameters right here, the focal length and the sensor size. The focal length should match whatever lens you're using. So if I'm using like a 50 millimeter lens, then I would change this to 50 millimeter, and this is the field of view that I would be getting. And the other parameter is the sensor size, also known as a film gate. Different cameras have different sensor sizes. And in my case, I know that my Canon 5D Mark III has a 36 millimeter sensor, so I just uh, select this 35 millimeter photo. So that's how you do it in Cinema 4D. So how do you do it in Houdini? Okay, so here we are in Houdini. I just created a box right here and I'm just gonna add a camera by clicking on this little button right here and just say new camera. And I'm gonna make sure that my lock button is on so that whatever I'm seeing in the viewport is actually seen by this particular camera. So, um, how do we uh, change the camera parameters here in Houdini so that they match real world counterparts? So uh, if I click on this and I show the parameters and I uh, click on the view tab, so we'll find this value focal length, which is uh, named identically to what it was in Cinema 4D. And uh, this basically matches the focal length of the lens that we would be using, in this case, a 50 millimeter and its um, focal units, it's telling you right here are in millimeters. So the question is, where do you go and change the uh, sensor size, also known as the film gate in uh, Cinema 4D, to match whatever real world counterpart you might be using? And that's this second value right here that Houdini calls aperture. And um, this is a little confusing because typically in the camera world, aperture refers to the opening of the iris on a lens. And it's usually a value that's given in f-stops. So you might see like f1.2 uh, or f8 or f11. And in this particular case, aperture simply refers to the horizontal width of the camera sensor that we would be using. So in this particular case, the default value that Houdini gives this aperture is 41.4214 millimeters, okay? So what do I need to change this number to, to match the sensor size of the camera that I'm using? So doing a quick uh, Google search revealed that uh, my Canon 5D Mark III, the sensor size is 36 millimeter by 24 millimeter. So by simply changing this number from uh, 41.4214 to 36, now my field of view should match exactly what my camera would be seeing if I had a 50 millimeter lens attached to it. What about other cameras? Uh, maybe you don't have a 5D Mark III, maybe you use an iPhone. So I found this really cool website and I'm gonna post the link to this below. And this website actually has a bunch of different sensor sizes uh, depending on, uh, you know, for different devices. And the number that you wanna pay attention to is this one, the width, okay, in millimeters. So do we know that this number is accurate? I wanted to prove it to myself and I wanted to make sure that uh, what I was talking about was indeed true, that I could um, set up my camera with um, a lens, uh, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter and an 85 millimeter lens and um, with the correct sensor length, which is uh, on my camera, 36 uh, millimeters 
And uh, I wanted to make sure that it was true. I wanted to kind of prove it to myself that uh, indeed uh, the field of view would match what I'm seeing here in uh, Houdini or what I would be seeing in Cinema 4D. So I kind of did like a bit of a not very scientific kind of test. I went into my backyard and I have this little foam cube and um, this foam cube is exactly one foot by one foot square. And I just mounted my camera at a fixed distance from the cube. And I took a photo with a 35 millimeter lens attached to it. Took another photo with a 50 millimeter lens attached to it. Another photo with an 85 millimeter lens attached to it. And then what I did is I went back into Houdini and I replicated the exact distances that I had, both the box from the camera sensor as well as the height of the camera sensor from the plane, the, the, the ground in this particular case. And, and basically I did uh, three uh, renders, one at uh, 35 millimeter, one with a 50 millimeter equivalent um, focal length, and one with an 85 millimeter focal length. So the key is, is this going to actually match? Let's find out. So the next thing that I did is uh, bring everything into Resolve and uh, I brought in like my 35 millimeter photo. I brought in my 50 millimeter photo and my 85 millimeter photo. So then I brought in the equivalent of a 35 millimeter lens from my Houdini camera, a uh, 50 millimeter lens on the Houdini camera and an 85 millimeter lens of the Houdini camera. And uh, what I did is I replicated the exact dimensions uh, as close as possible of the foam cube in Houdini. And I also replicated the exact distance of the camera from the cube, which was uh, 13 feet exactly. So converted that into meters, as well as the camera sensor from the ground, which was exactly one foot off the ground. And uh, once again, I converted that into meters. So um, let's see how it fares. I mean, basically this is, um, I actually did like two renders, one with the... Um, mantra render and one was done in Redshift just to make sure that it was actually the same thing. So I mean if I take like the uh, Redshift render and I just change my composite mode to uh, let's try exclusion then we can see that the cube is indeed where it needs to be. Uh, this matches the field of view that my camera saw. Uh, same thing with the 50 millimeter. Uh, let's change it to uh, exclusion once again. Where is it? Here it is. And once again, we are matching the dimensions roughly. I mean, keep in mind that my uh, my little uh, cube that I used to take a photo with, it's like made of foam. So it's not exactly like a perfect cube, like what you would get in Houdini or Cinema 4D. But, uh, but the dimensions are, you know, for this being like a fairly unscientific sort of way of testing this, um, this is what I expected to see. And once again, like the 85 millimeter, uh, let's change this to exclusion, uh, and boom, here we are. So 85 millimeter does match indeed the real world counterpart. And if we switch this to the mantra render, mantra render is also exactly the same as the redshift render. So, I mean, the camera does match the real world counterpart once you put in the exact uh, sensor width in the aperture field. And as I said, I'm going to have a link to uh, this website down below and that way you can find out the exact width of whatever sensor you might be using, whether it's like an iPhone all the way to an IMAX film camera. I hope this was useful to you guys and uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and keep an eye out for the next one.